Hello everyone, Dr. Chris Martinson here. I'm in one of my favorite places. I'm in some place called the Ravine, and this is where I spent a lot of my boyhood finding, well, whatever's under the rocks, crayfish, uh, caddisflies, helgramites, things like that. This was, this was my playground. And uh, ah, just is where I happen to be right now. So this is my happy place. Now, I'm here to introduce another video that I produced when my tribe and I, as we call them, and uh, our tribe is just people who are free thinkers, who care about the truth, who care about uh, figuring out what's going on in the world, want to have a right frame to understand what's going on so we can make decisions and make the best uh, out of our lives, such as they are and, and whatever we can do. So me and that tribe of people, uh, who are just awesome people, we went to Joel Salatin's farm called Polyface Farm down in Virginia. <laughs> And we were there for three days, and it was just, it was spectacular. Now, while we were there, we learned a lot of things. Joel is, uh, he, he calls himself the lunatic farmer. He's breaking all the rules by doing things that just make a lot of sense, that are regenerative, that are positive, that are economically viable. He farms in the way that I think everybody ought to consider farming. He, he just, they're crushing it down there, doing a great job. Raising chickens, raising pigs, raising rabbits, raising cows, raising all kinds of things. And uh, I had a chance to interview him. It was a spectacular interview and me and my team sat down and we thought about it and we realized that, um, again, we didn't feel like in this environment of censorship, of narrative control, of shaming, isolation, shutting things down, that really even that interview where I'm talking with a regenerative farmer, and to be fair, Joel is a really extraordinary regenerative farmer. He's very visionary. He's very outspoken. To be this age, I mean, I think of other 64-year-old farmers, the average 64-year-old farmer, I'm 64, um, the average 64-year-old farmer is suddenly... If it ain't hurting, it ain't working, you know. <laughs> and, and, and you start noticing mortality. And guess what? The kids are gone. You're an empty nester. Nobody's around. And it's lonely. It's really lonely. I get to wake up in the morning. <laughs> And have all these wonderful, beautiful, enthusiastic young people that push me and say, man, I'm starting out. Lead me. See, you can't give up now. Make your knee go. <laughs> right? Who cares if it hurts? Okay? We want to we change this world. Our mission statement is to develop emotionally, environmentally, and economically enhancing agricultural prototypes and facilitate their duplication throughout the world. And uh, he has lots of points of view and um, makes him a really great person to interview. At any rate, as we went through that material and looked at it, we realized that a lot of that could get us in trouble here on YouTube again because we're talking truthy stuff, or at least talking ideas. And you know, I'm all about free speech, right? I'm all about the idea that what we can do and what we should do is be wrestling with all ideas, no matter how uncomfortable. In fact, maybe even the most uncomfortable ideas are the ones that are most important to challenge ourselves on and to explore, because that's how we grow, right? If you aren't actively challenging your mind, you won't experience any discomfort, right? And that's fine. Uh, but you won't be growing or learning either. And this is a world that requires us to have complete attention to what's going on. Now, I believe Joel and his crew at Polyface Farms have possibly a workable solution for how we as humans can re-inhabit this world. They're doing it. They're doing it economically. They're doing it with love, with observation, care, concern, thoughtfulness, joy. Uh, really, they're just knocking the cover off the ball. So, so I really invite you to come and look at this particular video and listen to it again, you're going to have to click this link to follow 
this link back over to my website because uh, that's where we're housing these things now, particularly if we're going to get uh, shamed, slammed, censored, abused, uh, anything like that, because we're not following the consensus narrative, uh, which is something about, best I can tell right now, it's you have to follow government and, and, and authoritarian edicts. Seems to be the seems to be the the, the cause of the day, and and uh, no questioning allowed. No questioning allowed. Uh, you know, whatever the edicts are from on high, whatever the party platform is, that's the one you're required to toe the line with or zip it. Right. So um, obviously, I'm not that good at zipping it. So we are having this conversation. It's a great interview. It's really important. Come on by, check it out. Love to see you uh, on that. By the way. Uh, I'll be back soon with some more COVID coverage. There's a lot of things going on that just don't make a lot of sense, a lot of variants, things like that. We'll get to that. But I really, you, if you haven't, if you want to see what it's like to talk with a lunatic farmer, who, by the way, one of his best books is called You Can Farm. Love that book. It's actually a Bible of mine as I create my own homestead farm. And the second book, Everything I Want to Do is Illegal. <laughs> and that's, that's a book he wrote. And it's true. It's true. Senseless, mindless regulations that are trying to squish us into a box of conformity that arguably is taking us down a path of destruction, destruction of social fabric, cultural fabric, ecological fabric, just really obviously dumb things that are being legislated from on high, which is maybe why some of us aren't all that thrilled to just follow blindly with whatever edicts come from some faceless bureaucrat somewhere, maybe. I don't know. At any rate, that's the message I have for you today. Really hope you come by and read that, and uh, and yeah, this is my happy place. So I'm going to go find some crayfish right now, and we'll be back with you next week.